should have turned off my camera. I think it'll be all right. Turn it off. Why did you turn it on? I didn't. It was uh, it was when I was doing YouTube. Anyway, we're live. Hello, everybody. Good um, morning. If you are, if you can hear us, if you can see us well, then let us know. Let us know where you're all coming in from as well. It's got an electric shot from that. Okay, so. Yeah, let us know where you're all coming in from. Last time, the stream quality was just Terrible. awful. And um, we actually, you know, paid a lot of money for a device to be able to use a good camera, and it just didn't work out well. So we've resorted back to a webcam this time, but hopefully you can see us a little bit better. Uh, let us know if you can see us okay. So we've got some people tuning in here, and let us know if the audio is all right. And yeah, so at the moment, um, this is our second live stream together. We are just going to be talking about sort of news and views on China. You know, there's a lot of stuff that's been happening in the past sort of week and a lot of, um, you know, things that can spark big debate, uh, really. So no, no offense, but the quality is not much better. Mm, okay, well, unfortunately, this time we're not going to be able to do anything about it. We've We've, we're going to have to sort out another um, sort of way of doing it in the next one. But we, on our playback, it looks okay. But uh, you're in black and white. Okay, so we've got Top Spark coming in. Manchester, it's 3 a.m. Thank you very much for tuning in. Samantha Morning, Jenkins Tom here again. Man. You're in black and white. Oh, wait, that's the colour you're wearing. Um, <laughs> Molly Wong, Hongster, Hongster Hong. Aaron Antone, hello from LA. Thank you everyone for joining in. The Quantum Alchemist, see you here again. Uh, Dr. Yu, Bradley Wilson, hello from Sydney. It's not that, it's better than last week apparently. Okay, good stuff. Um, so at the moment we have got a bunch of videos lined up. Um, we've got about seven already edited and private ready to be released for you. Most of them from Shanghai, uh, when we went last Two weeks ago now? It is, yeah, yeah. Two I'm weeks so ago. Quick, now. It? We've Tom been so busy. Massively fast, isn't it? This yeah. keeps electric shock you in. Yeah, I've got to shock. What would that shock? Uh, yeah, it's not a shock for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we've got a bunch of videos lined up and we're, you know, thinking about where to go next. Um, so hello from Peru. Cool. Wow, hi. Ask Louise, Z, Adam, and Pierre Benter. Okay, lovely stuff. Barrett and Tetra. Okay, so let's start this off. Let's kick it off, man. What, what's going on? So, okay, one of the big um, news stories at the moment is the discrimination foreigners seem to be um, experiencing within China. Mm. Uh, there's been a pretty big incident this week about African people in Guangzhou. Now, I'm completely against discriminating against people. Um, and I think, you know, I just want to get it out of the way that so it's completely wrong, you know, to, to discriminate against people from either where they're from or the colour of their skin. Mm -hmm. However, having lived in Guangzhou for about three years, I do know there's a lot of underlying issues yeah. uh, with Africans in general in, in Guangzhou. Right. Um, and I think what's happened, this this sort of COVID-19 virus has just brought all those things to a head. And it's kind of like... It's been the catalyst. Yeah, it's, for it's like, like been the, the thing that's broke the camel's back. Right. Um, so I just, I just, just want to talk about some of those things because I think often when these video clips go onto social media, a lot of the time they're taken very much out of context. Oh yeah, just for and, face value. Yeah, and, and you don't know what's led up to that situation. Yeah. But I see many people then go, oh look, 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 but they don't know any of the, the background. Yeah, a lot of people will just put um, the 10 second clip and they'll, they'll say this is what happened, but then it's just, it's they just take it at face value. That's right. right. So, so again, th this is my, my own experience in Guangzhou. So, um, over over the, the years, because China have done a lot of business with African nations, um, it was relatively easy for, for a lot of these African nations to get visas to, to come to, to China. Now, a lot of African re sort of regions are sort of economically behind where China is. So a lot of African nation people, business people, were coming to Guangzhou. Right. 
um, because it's a big business hub. There's a lot of things that they buy there, especially clothing. You know, clothing was a big business yeah. to, to African nations. So you get all the business people coming, which, which is fine. But you're also getting people that were coming, that not necessarily business people. What they were doing, they were coming to China thinking they were going to get a better life. Mm -hmm. So they were arriving here and they were destroying their passports and documents. So technically they were there. So they get a tourist visa for say one month or three months. They come in, then they would destroy their passports and their visas. So then when, if the police or the authorities pick them up, the authorities didn't know which country they come from. And obviously as a foreign nation, you can't deport somebody back to a different country. You yeah, have to yeah, deport yeah. them back to, to, to the where country. they're a citizen yeah. of. Well, if they've destroyed their documents and then they don't tell the authorities where they've come from, what can the authorities do? They can't deport them because they don't know where to deport them, them to. So this was one issue. A second issue was that the amount of crime being committed by uh, certain African people, and, and this is where, where it's such a shame, because actually probably in reality, a majority of the African community coming to China were coming to do business. They were very respectable, law-abiding people. But you had a few that came, and what they did, they, they were committing crimes. So I'll give you one story. In, in Guangzhou, of an evening, a lot of people will sell things on the street. So it's very typical. As soon as it gets dark, a car will pull up, and they'll put a, a blanket over the front of the car, and they'll display their merchandise wares. So I'm looking at one of these actually selling running shoes um, you know nike adidas running shoes and i'm looking at them and as i was looking at them an african guy came up he um, picked up a, a training shoe asked the chinese guy oh can i can i try them so the, the guy got this the other one you know normally you only display one so he got the yeah. other one and the african guy just grabbed them and ran off so this also puts a sort of bad picture into to people's uh, Chinese people's minds of those African people. And then the third event was something which happened more recently, is that the, there was a, an African guy who kind of attacked a nurse who was trying to give him a, a COVID ID test. And now, so these kind of situations, these kind of things go viral on the Chinese internet, and it puts a picture into some Chinese people's minds that, oh, all Africans are bad, where in reality, it's probably a it's very, a very, very minority. small minority. And that's been a reflection of the, see, this is where I see the problem is, yeah, that, that happens in every nation where it's a very small minority of, say, a particular race that are doing, committing crimes or doing bad things that then, um, go viral on the internet, go viral in, in China or say, and then it's, it's they, there's a tendency to say, oh, it's that race of people that are causing a problem, which it's very easy to, to, to do that, but you've got to stay aware that it's obviously not um, because of, it's not, you can't say, oh, it's that color of people, or it's that race of people that are more likely to do that. However, the, the, the nationalist, you know, the innate nationalism That's in right. Chinese people will say, look, you you don't belong here. You should be following our yeah. procedures, our rules. And that can sort of, um, you know, bring up a lot of, you know. Yeah, well, I, I noticed this um, when we um, did a recent video at a Mal in China. And, uh, initially, we got refused by the, the sort of security guard on the door. Mm -hmm. um, and then we kind of went in a different way and we filmed in there. We had a lot of comments on that video from Chinese people saying, oh, look, you've, you've broken the rules, oh, you've yeah, broken yeah. the rules. So, and I think this is down to that. Um, in a lot of Western countries, sort of people don't think so much about breaking small rules, whereas here they do. There's a lot yeah, more yeah, consciousness yeah. about it doesn't matter how small the rules are. And we've noticed when you cross yeah, the road, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, they will come out, oh, you cross the road on a red light. But... In the West, we we don't have a we don't really think too much about that. But obviously here we we should obey the rules. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But but sometimes we don't. Sometimes we don't. And it's like yeah, you, you make the decision in your mind if if it's 
going to break a rule that, that can be criminally charged or it's yes. just something that a lot of people would be okay with and maybe a few people who are in a bad mood won't be okay with. For example, with the <clears throat> with that secure that particular security guard who didn't let us into that mall with the camera, you know, there are some people who do just like to flex their power a little bit when there's actually not a rule to film in the yeah the the, the mall or not. Um, so you know, and then you go around the other side, and those people were okay with it. So it's like yeah. Well, we noticed that when we did the Huawei store video. Uh, as we were walking towards the, the flagship Huawei store in uh, Mix City here in Shenzhen, a security guy at the shopping sort of shopping park was like really kind of not happy that we got a camera. Yeah, as soon as we got to the Huawei store, they were more than happy for us to come and film within the Huawei store. They, they kind of encouraged it, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. And the way we see it, especially um, with products and things like that it's free promotion isn't it you it know, is just for the brand sure yeah, yeah. You know, any press is good press so even if you're talking even if worst case scenario you went in and said oh no i'm not that keen on this but it's still free promotion isn't it absolutely and we, were, we were we were going in yeah. there to to say look these products are great and stuff so why would they not want you to, to film it is a strange thing it is. especially you know we've had it with so many restaurants like we're saying we want to show people on YouTube where, you know, expats, where they can come to eat because um, promote, them, and yeah. promote them. And they're saying, no, no, you know, because they've been told by higher management that people can't film in their store. So it seems as if they haven't, some people don't use their initiative and they'd rather just say, look, no, this is the rule. It's black and white. There's no gray yeah. area. Um, I think that comes down to this sort of top-down kind of management style here where uh, the lower level people are scared to make any decisions on their own in case they get into trouble for, from the higher. And often you find when you get a uh, sort of more senior person and you explain to them the situation is generally sorted out. Yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously um, communication also has a lot to do with it. Um, you know, we certainly I don't. <coughs> well, uh, both of us don't. It's more Chinese, but to but, sort out any yeah. you know, controversy, it's not. I don't have good enough Chinese to, yeah. to, to talk to them. I, mean, I, I did that video at the wet market the other day, and, and you know, there was comments saying, Oh, the, the guy doing the fish says he, he's not happy with you filming. But my partner who was with me explained, uh, she basically says, look, you know, Westerners don't, don't see this, that's what he wants to feel. Right, right. It was kind of okay with it. Yeah. Whereas I think if I'd have been on my own, it might have been a bit more of an issue. But because I had somebody who could explain the situation, it diffused the situation, which is, you know, it's not Yes, so I originally thought, and this, this argument has been brought to my attention from, from a different perspective as well, but originally I thought, Oh, it must be because there is they are very aware of this anti-China sentiment uh, in the West. So they automatically assume, oh, this foreigner with a camera is trying to um, expose us. Bad things, yeah. They're going to be saying bad things about us, um, and, and that's why they're going to tell us to put it away. However, I spoke to, um, I went and did an interview with that, that news company, uh -huh. um, and they said she, she's a you know she's a broadcaster mm -hmm. and she even had her ID card to say that she's a broadcaster and she was still treated the same she wasn't allowed to film in like wow you know I can't remember where I was but something like a mall or something like that and that's so it here you have to get Chinese too. yeah I think here you have to get Chris you, do you remember when we, we went to see the um, the anniversary Shenzhen lights and um, we spoke to those and, and they suggested that we needed to get a permit to film. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, th I think it, it comes down to that. But, yeah, the situation in Guangzhou, and I think that there's been pictures of, of these sort of African people where they've got nowhere to stay. And, and you know, I, I don't know for sure, but, you know, I, I think it, obviously it's an issue because if, if they are here illegally, they obviously won't be able to get a health code uh, and one other thing that that um, some what, of them. What happens if you can't have a health code? Well, if you can't have a health code, the rules are you're not allowed in a, a 
hotel or, or uh, you know, yeah, some apartment. Yeah, because that happened house. to me like, in Shanghai because I oh, right. got a bank account here and I can't get that health care. get that health care. So, so yeah, obviously, if, if you are illegal here, um, you can't get a bank account and you can't get that Alipay health code. So there is that. But what I did um, notice is that a number of Chinese people bought them blankets and water and that. So there are people out there who say, of course, yeah. But I think where the, the issue is, is I think the government need to step in and, and deal with the situation. It seems to me that within Guangzhou, the government were a little bit slow or are a little bit slow in stepping in and, and bringing the situation under control. Yeah, I've seen that there are, um, you know, there's even been adverts and stuff in metro stations and stuff saying don't, you know, discriminate against foreigners yeah. and stuff. Um, I haven't actually seen those in Shenzhen. No, I haven't so, seen them. I must say, personally, I've noticed a little bit of, not, not discrimination, but when I've got on a metro, I've noticed that people are a little bit, you know, they, oh, they look at you a little yeah, bit yeah. more and stuff. Um, but I've not experienced really any discrimination obviously we had a couple of issues in shanghai um, but that was mainly because you didn't have a health code uh, it wasn't sort of a discrimination issue you know they, they actually said oh well, we did have the jim mao tower yeah, yeah. Uh, but again that was when we were talking to just the people on the door i think had we have both had a health code we could have asked to speak to higher management and it may have sorted the situation it may not and just a thank you to uh, Tom Lui. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Thank you uh, for your generosity. Yeah, but I, I did see some interesting news yesterday that Beijing, from Sunday today, that they require all guests staying in a hotel to have a COVID test. Now, I, I'm really not sure how that's going to work because let's say you you had a test what three weeks ago right yeah and you tested negative because you you got picked up at that that thing and you mm -hmm. actually made a video about it um but like three weeks later let me just plug that so go and watch that video if you haven't already um yeah. it's i i actually got tested in china for coronavirus um it was uploaded about three weeks ago Karen. actually this, this this is um also but i, I i'm not sure how that's going to work because you know do you get tested at the hotel and then what do you do? Do you, do you wait there while they get the results or I, I just, or, or do you have to have a certificate? And if you have a certificate, how, long? how old can that certificate be? Again, I just, I just want to sort of mention something I forgot to mention with the Guangzhou situation is uh, obviously, as I said before, there are a number of illegal Africans within Guangzhou. Now, one of the other things that came out is some of them, they had symptoms of COVID, but they didn't want to go to the hospital because they're illegal and they were trying to just stay home, but yet they were still mixing with other people in the African community. Now, where I think it's wrong, there was an issue where um, there was an African guy and he's been married to a Chinese woman and he had his health code. He's been living with a Chinese woman he's married to. He's got kids. They went and tested him. They insisted he need to be tested, yet they didn't test his wife. See, that one just so that's sounds that's absolutely good. wrong. Because obviously, know. you know, anyone with with common sense can see that if he's going to be tested for it and he's positive, then... Um, it's highly likely his wife is positive, yeah, well. and his child. You know, it, a virus doesn't attack a particular colour of skin or exactly. a particular, you know, wealthy people and, and, and non-wealthy like people. Like some people. Yeah, think yeah. It think it, you know, some people seem to have in, in the, the, the head that, oh, it, it only affects one type of people or one income level of people. <laughs> you know, it's just complete rubbish, that is. It's just ridiculous to, to, to think that. But thank you very much, Russ. That's uh, very generous of you. Appreciate and, that. Um, MWLI 1984. Thank you uh, guys for your donations there. Um, what were we just on again? We were talking about the discrimination. Uh, yeah, so of course you've got these people that um, are going to pose a problem because they don't have the things that you need. So this is this is another thing though. It's like there's been time and time again I've heard of um, people being in bars and, and restaurants or whatever, and all they do when you enter is test your temperature. 
And so everybody said there's 100 people who flocked in to test your temperature. And then later on, one person is singled out inside and um, authorities or the security have gone to approach them for their health code. However, there's 99 other people in there that could have recently returned. Obviously, actually, because they're Chinese citizens, they can still come back any time, yes, can't they? Yeah. So at this point, you know, even more so now, because the door closed to foreigners two weeks and one day ago now. So the incubation period is 14 days, or the quarantine, the recommended quarantine is 14 days. It is. So now there's no foreigners inside of China that have not but been no, here for 14 days. Yeah, that's not true too, because in, in the initial data that came out uh, when they were doing the, the sort of studies on COVID, they had found some outlying cases which can take as much as 24 okay, days. Okay, yeah. yeah that, so there is that. that there is that, that too. Yeah. But if you work it out, you know, mathematically, the probability of um, Chinese citizens coming back and having the virus now compared to foreigners is astronomically different because you've got all the foreigners here in China that have been here for 15 days now, at least. And then you've got China, a lot of Chinese citizens. Even when the people coming back to China were compared to foreigners was probably like 90% anyway. Yeah. So now you've got a way higher chance of Chinese citizens being infected in, in Absolutely, China. Absolutely, yeah. So the, if you really think about it, the, the, the xenophobia and the, the worry of foreigners being affected, it just doesn't make any sense. That, that's right, yeah, because the, the likelihood that is much less likely that foreigners will have it than actually nationals coming back now. Because I, th I think the figure I read was about 85% of people who are coming back into China are, are Chinese nationals from abroad. Yeah, they can have come back within the past 14 days, yes. whereas foreigners can't. I think they still have to quarantine, though. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah they still have to, to quarantine. And I think I, I I sort of read some figure. I can't remember the numbers, but you know the Chinese authorities are having to, to deal with quite large numbers of people in in quarantine. There's obviously a limit of, of how much um, they can do. I think one of the other things, and, and this is not to say it's Chinese don't do it either, but I think they had more of a problem. When they were asking people to self quarantine, oh, yeah, they I had so. more of a problem getting foreigners to comply than they did Chinese nationals. Yeah, I think that's, uh, there's got to be some truth to that. Because of, of as well, and it's like you see this is um, in, you know, um, now in America because it's Easter, and initially Trump said, "Oh well, I hope we can have all America opened up by Easter." There are people willy nilly just wandering around and going out in America now. Yeah, even um, even back home, it, it's Easter. In the UK, you know, you know it's, just, it's just mad. I've just had a friend message me this morning say, uh, "What day is it? It's Easter Sunday today, or oh, it's Saturday yesterday?" But it's a bank holiday weekend in the UK right now, so everybody has that time off work, um, no matter what, right? Other than the public services, so. It's really nice weather this weekend and i had someone yeah. from brighton which is on on a beach he said oh the beach was you know pretty full yesterday so that's just crazy it, he it? says you know the the, the the guidelines say um you can go out once a day for exercise and he said you know everyone seems to be a, a you know an exercising fanatic at the moment because or everyone seems to have a key working job because obviously everyone's just yeah, yeah, yeah going yeah. out yeah um, because there's no real way to police it, is there? Like, it's like, very difficult, yeah. Isn't it? yeah. But, but the, the point is, people should police it themselves, yeah. They should, which they do, yeah. Back to your point, yeah. Which, which they, they, they do tend really. to more in Asian nations, and, and as, you know, and I think that's you can now see. And and, and, and I know many foreigners think, oh, oh, the numbers are all fake in China, but obviously, that the big thing to stop the spread of the disease, the virus, is break social contact and i think they were much more effective here doing that than they have been in western countries because people just don't do it anywhere near as much in you know here once the sort of alarm was raised man the streets were like empty you know that uh, our complex empty them everybody just shut themselves in the, the apartments and that was it absolutely you know there was a few delivery guys out and that delivering the food but literally and we made a video you know Shenzhen was literally like a ghost town 
And yet that hasn't happened. You know, you just mentioned in, in Brighton the beach is packed. You'd have never have got that in China. And, and, and that's where they're going to have a difficulty in stopping the spread in these Western countries. As you see, the death toll now, you know, America has, has become the, the new place with the highest amount of deaths, the highest amount of cases. And yeah, they have got a big population. But a lot of that but was China down to, to yeah, it. China. And people got will say, problems. "Oh, the numbers are." Yeah, numbers. people will look at America now and, and it's like, "Oh, look, the Chinese must have been lying because look how few deaths they've got compared to America, Italy." You know, I look at the UK. How many deaths there? We, 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 we're about to hit ten thousand. Yeah, yesterday you know? it was. I uh, worked it out, and there's about 1,700 people roughly a day die in the UK. And yesterday there was a thousand attributed to coronavirus, yeah. so that's a 60% increase, which is yeah. literally like a, a horror movie. And that's not counting people that have died outside of hospitals yet. Oh, right. I, think, I think there's still some lag with there, um, and I think it's you know the the, the, the virus will only stop spreading if you stop social contact, that's the way to stop it. So the more social contact goes on, it will just continue to spread. And, and, and that's, I think, a massive difference what, what happened here to, to, to the West. And I think that's a, you know, a, a really key point. Yeah. And I think the West are missing that. You know, my, uh, my girlfriend, she's, what, there's 30 cases in Shenzhen or something like that, active yeah. cases right now, and that hasn't changed for a few days, I think. And she is still more terrified than my friends are in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> like, and there's like, I don't even know how many there are in the UK at the moment, but mm -hmm. it's just that shows you the mindset difference. Like, there's no one in the UK who would be worried at all if there was only 30 cases yeah i mean I, I i remember speaking to my mom and dad in, in, in the sort of earlier day and obviously at that time they were really worried about us here and and i just sensed at that time they they didn't take it that serious and i kept telling them look you know this is really serious you need to make sure you stay in blah blah, blah. i think now with the older people or in, in the uk it's starting to sort of become a reality when they're seeing the news every night oh there's another thousand people died today yeah because a lot and of these the hospitals people, are overwhelmed you know a lot of these older people especially they they really um, believe the news and really you know they, they right, follow yeah. the the government's orders much more than the younger people yeah. do their advice um so yeah that's definitely the case i just want to shout a few people out we've got samantha jenkins still in here james cook swifty ma Thank you all guys for um, commenting down below and getting some discussion going here. Yeah, I guess Swifty Mars tuned in to see uh, this handsome boy here. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, thanks for uh, joining us, Shinjo. Um, Ishtiak Hussein, thank you for joining us. Walter Koi, in Hoko, thank you for joining Good us. Good morning, Walter. Um, let us know where you're all coming in from. And um, we just want to say that banner is at the top there. So if you do have anything that you think oh you want us to expand on or you want us to answer for you and discuss even if it's not related to what we're talking about you can drop a super chat and we will discuss it thoroughly for you okay so um i kind of want to get back to this discrimination thing again obviously that's the hot topic at the moment and one thing i wanted to mention was a video i saw yesterday i did say that i was going to try and show it on screen but i, I forgot to set it up so I'm going to explain it. It was an American woman and she wanted to look at an apartment and <laughs> she had the health code, which is what you need to be able to say, look, um, I've been in China for the past two weeks and, you know, I'm, I'm healthy. She had the health code and um, the officials were still not allowing her into the premises. So, of course, like we spoke about before, there are a lot of people who don't meet the requirements of what you need yeah. to be able to do things. But you are seeing that overlap a lot into the people who have everything you need and then it is literally singling your people out because yes. of their yeah. race. Um, obviously, that's where the big problem lies. Um, and I think, like, like we said before, in Shenzhen anyway, I haven't actually experienced yeah. anything too bad yet other than people being you know 
anxious to sit next to me on the metro. Mm -hmm. Which that, when it comes to things like that, look, I'm, I'm not bothered. As long as they're not yeah, shouting it, it, abuse at me. That. Yeah, as long as they're not shouting abuse at me and things yeah. like that. It's yeah. exactly the same as what happened in other countries where, you know, Chinese people were getting on the bus and, you know, all the rest of the UK people would move, you know, seats yeah. on the bus and on the train because they thought, oh, because they're Chinese, oh, you must be infected. So it's kind of the same now happening in reverse. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. against it so i can quite understand that and i, I think it's important and, and i do see some friends getting really angry about that and i think that's the wrong thing to do it's it's strange because you kind of slot into the society that you're in if that happened in the uk i would be livid but because that's happened here you've got to take it on the chin yeah because obviously the society is very different i think I would love to see, like, obviously you can't enact the exact same situation twice, but if, um, you know, someone, a very educated person, someone who speaks English, say, here, and they move away from me on the metro, I'd like to know how they'd feel about that if that happened in England, where the society is very, you know, you've got to be politically correct and mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's popular to be offended, you know. Yeah, well, Anything I, uh, like that people would be up in arms about. Yeah. You know. Well, I had a situation on the metro where I, I sat on the metro. It wasn't massively busy, but it was, was busy. I sat next to somebody and I got talking to them and they were absolutely fine. You know, so it, it really, I, I do think it will depend on their sort of knowledge of the whole thing. If, if they have more knowledge of it and they, you know, they understand it more, you know, those kind of people will know that, oh, if, you, if you're a foreign in Shenzhen, you didn't arrive yesterday because there's a quarantine. But if you're a Chinese person who's not aware of all that, you know, there's lots of people in, in England who just don't follow the news at all. You know, yeah, if, yeah. if it's a Chinese person that hasn't followed the news and they've seen on social media, oh, lots of foreigners are bringing the virus back into China, exactly, straight the away, they're yeah. going to go, oh, my God, foreigner, keep away. Um, yeah. And, and my, my friend... Uh, who lives in um, Zhao Ching, he's experienced a, a, a bit of this. He was waiting at, um, he would want to get a bus somewhere and there was like, eventually the police had to be called because some of the Chinese people in Zhao Ching were saying, oh look, foreigner, keep away, foreigner, keep away. But maybe that's just because they, they don't know it's the ignorance. whole of the picture is ignorance and maybe a bit of a lack of education. Oh, for sure, yeah. yeah it is. Um, obviously, Jiaoqing is a like, third, fourth tier city. So the, the, the people living in Jiaoqing are very different to the people living in. And, and what you've also got to remember is cities like Shenzhen, you know, Shanghai, they are much more used to foreigners. Yeah. Yeah, because they, they, they've had foreigners in their cities for many, many years, where some of the, the smaller or rural cities, the, the lower tier cities, and not that used to foreigners at all, you know. And, and I remember even going to a, a small kind of, I went to, um, oh, where was it, Dian. And uh, when I was there, this is at the time of the virus, a couple of years ago, people are just like, can't stop looking at me. Because, and, and we, we talked to this woman who was 18, it was the first time in her whole life she'd ever been face to face with a foreigner. She'd only ever seen them on TV before. That's hard to relate to, isn't it? And they're like, I, I was walking around there right. and I felt like there's a thousand eyes looking at me whenever, yeah, yeah, because yeah. They just, they, they're just just not used to seeing foreigners in their, their town, you yeah. know, in their, their, their city. So yeah, when you got stuff like that, you have to try and put yourself in their shoes a bit. Um, you do. You know, most of it, does come down to ignorance like you said it does um it's but I, I think as well i think for, for me and obviously i'm older than you and what annoys me a little bit is when i see foreigners at the first sort of sign of anything against them they, they start to get angry and they shout at the chinese people and i think that's also wrong i think a lot of these situations can be sorted out if people keep a calm level head mm. Um, and I sometimes see that people don't always, but that's on both sides. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I think sometimes people get, and, and I can understand because the, 
you know, the, the situation is very tense yes. because well, of what's to happened. Start to set people's yeah. temper going. But also, I think the situation is very tense because they were very hard to, to sort of almost get all the cases to zero here, new cases. And it only takes that slight bit of lack of concentration or somebody doing something wrong to set it all off again. And I think there's a nervousness and tension about that. And, and I also think that that Chinese people are seeing around the world how it, what's happening in America and the UK and Europe. And it's almost they think mm, maybe their governments are not as responsible and the people are not as responsible. It's strange. It's like it's a massive uh, psychology lesson how, <laughs> how much the, the people reflect the leadership and the other way around as well. It's like over generations, it's like you your society become your society is one with the, the leadership it's like you reflect the same morals and you see that here with like just Chinese people who with they most of them will take the government's advice and, and stuff like that whereas yeah. I do find I it think, you know I, I think this this sort of discrimination thing you know I think it's because it's not something that's normally happen so much in China and I think it because it's now happening it's a bigger story and I think this discrimination happens all around the world and generally it is the less educated people who are pushing it more because they don't understand the, the bigger picture you know I, I see videos from the UK where people go oh I don't care about it you know, you ought to get it or you don't. You know, they've got this attitude. And they're not the smartest tools yeah. in the box, those people, are no, they? No, no. And I guess it's probably the same here, that the, the better educated people in society understand a bit more because they, they read, they listen to the news, they, they read stuff. So they understand about the fronts where the lesser educated, all they've seen is maybe they've had a few WeChat posts of foreigners have, have got the disease because look, it's raging all around the world and we've cleared it up here. So it just makes them scared. Definitely. And yeah, that's yeah. get that that fear provokes an adverse reaction. Yeah. They probably wouldn't normally. You know, I, I mentioned earlier I went to a uh, JM, right? And this was this was a couple of years ago before the virus was here. And although everybody was interested, nobody was scared. In fact, I was going into shops and I got like Groups of girls, oh, can we have our photo with you? Can we have our photo with you? Because there was no fear. Mm. But I bet if I went back there now, oh, yeah, yeah, I'd totally get a different. totally different vibe because there'd be, be fear. The complete opposite. Yeah, yeah. And, and fear brings out the worst in people sometimes. And it's sad, but it's true. Right, that's a good know, point, you know, um, it, it can quickly change. Um, Solar flare. Solar flare. Thank you for your donation. Uh, uh, West debates endlessly about masks. It's a no-brainer. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely agree. We covered I mean, that in the uh, last show, actually, where we can bring yeah, it I, I, Again, I just, I just don't understand. My personal opinion is, is why the West have, have sort of been initially saying you don't need to wear masks. I think it was down to not wanting to panic the public because I just don't think they have the stock. And I think if they'd have gone out there and gone, okay, wear a mask, it will help against you catching it. There would have been absolute chaos in the stores. People would have been fighting. There'd have been riots, you know. And I, I think that's why I, I've noticed over the last week in the US, many states have now advised people to to wear masks. What is that only in the badly affected area? Well, well I guess yeah, everywhere, yeah. I mean, I, I, everywhere must be badly affected. Yeah, and what I find amazing is on the same day the CDC in America says, we advise that you wear masks. Their president, Donald Trump, is going around going, no, I'm not going to wear a mask. It, it, it's only a precaution. You don't have to. It's voluntary. You know, man, it's just like, it just, it's just the sensible thing to do, even if it stops the disease spreading, even if 1% don't people. get it because of that. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? There was, um, I, I don't actually know truth behind it but maybe someone needs to fact check me but about trump intercepting packages of medical supplies that were going elsewhere um, yeah well what what he's done you know 
I think especially Canada, and they were yeah, they yeah. Were, I mean, they're, 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 they were you know, they're, they're sort of like this with, with yeah, the yeah. states. And what, what happened? I think I think it, it was over three M because three M are one of the the main companies. Three M and Honeywell, I think, are, are the main producer of three uh, M. Sorry, of um, what are they called the masks, the N ninety five masks, yeah. And um, so when when it first broke out in China, many countries shipped stuff to here to help China now. China is, is shipping sort of stuff all around there. But Trump passed a bill to forbid American companies, um, you know, export them to, to, to any other countries, even countries, you know, that, that they've been allies with for, for many, many years. And, and I find that a little bizarre. I think in times like this, everybody should help everybody else. You shouldn't get protectionist. Yeah, that's a good, good point to bring that up because there's a, a very famous journalist in the US who made an extremely negative video about China because they had, um, I think they had, it might have been 3M, I don't know, but they had an American people or company work uh, making masks here, mm -hmm. but China passed the bill that they can't export any masks as well, or yeah. they said that people can't export masks. And um, this journalist was having a massive go at China saying, Oh look, this is what they, they you know, they're keeping all the masks inside their own country. It's it's totally unfair and just. I think that. I think what what part of the reason that I brought that up is you have a few bad actors in China now. As you know, a lot of companies uh, like BYD, Tencent, they set up mass production lines. And I'm sure big companies like that will be producing everything to to the, the guidelines and standards. But you had a few bad actors. Here, who quickly set up mass production and the standard wasn't high enough. And I think some of these got exported abroad, and straight away the media abroad was going, Oh, look, you know, China produces faulty mass. But again, it's not the majority, it's just a few bad actors. And, and I think that's shameful for those people who did that, you know, here. Um, but again, it's not something that happens just here, it happens in other places. But I think that caused a lot of concern. That you got a few bad actors, they quickly set up a production on exported some mass and they didn't meet the standard. So I think that's why China sort of, you know, from what I understand now, the the customs in China are inspecting things a lot more, making sure they've got because they don't want faulty or substandard products yeah. uh, reaching, you know, other countries. Because again, obviously that that is just not good. Yeah, I was uh, speaking to someone that was saying that. They were exporting masks all over the world and they just gave up on America because it was so hard to, to get masks into that country due to yeah. the regulations that they just gave up. Because as we know, that the, the demand is so high at the moment that That's a lot huge. of companies are um, not getting the particular certification certification because um, they're telling the, the country they're sending them to, oh, look, it might take an extra week to, to get this yeah. regulated. And they're saying, look, don't bother, just send it yeah. to us because we, we need it. And um, that doesn't seem to be the case with America. It no, seems no, I don't right. know what, if they're making it difficult to import them or what. Because I think it's to do with with um, they have a uh, an N95 mask and, and it was different to the regulations of the Chinese one. Although the Chinese regulation what well, was fine for most other countries, apparently it didn't meet the standards of the American one. Um, I don't know what the difference is. I think it was very minimal, but it just meant that you know America closed themselves off to this to a huge supply of masks. I, I I don't know the figures, but I bet eighty five percent of the world's masks are made in China. You know, yeah. And uh, and I also find it very strange how uh, you know all these countries go, oh look, you know China this, China that. Well, actually, you've got to look at it. Who's fault? It's not China's fault that they manufacture all the masks. Yeah, they've it's, had their yeah, production set up. Yeah, it, you know that that's down to American, British, European factories moving their production. Here. That nobody forced them to do that. Yeah, yeah. And then people um, complain about yeah. it when it suits them. You know. But what what I find amazing about this is most of these countries have been aware of this kind of pandemic for years and years and years, right? Yes. Yeah, you know, experts happen. have been saying this is going to happen, this is going to happen. And it seems to me, and I think there was a, a damning report produced by Reuters uh, on, on the UK about this uh, 
last week where they said, look, you know, the America, sorry, the, the British government were aware they've had, you know, meetings and meetings over the years about, about preparation, yet they never prepared. And, you know, all this PPE and, and the mass and everything, realistically, countries should have strategic stockpiles of those, oh, yeah, more than enough. Now, okay, that means spending money, but surely... That, that's what it is. And this brings me on to another point with, with Western governments. I think there's a balance that is played out in government is how many lives can be lost before it becomes politically unpalatable. Right, right. You know, the, 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 there'll be people in government that make a call between how much is it going to affect us economically and how much, you know, how many lives can we lose before... People the tipping start, point, yeah. Yeah. tipping point, and, and I think that is a calculation that's done. And I suppose in the real world, that is a calculation that has to be done. Yeah, it is really, but you know, uh, it's uh, hard to make that moral decision. Yeah, and I think this is where where actually China did take the lead very early on. They shut down Wuhan, and then a few days later, Hubei province. Now that was 60 million people. That's a major, major city. And at that point, there weren't that many cases. But as soon as they realised that the contagion from person to person, and I know a lot of Westerners criticise and say, oh, you know, they, they lied about it. From looking at all the evidence, I don't believe they did. When they first investigated, it wasn't conclusive that there was widespread person to person transmission. As soon as that was realised, then I it think they acted, pretty. yeah, and they, you know, um, made the WHO aware of that as well. Mm -hmm. And the WHO for months and months of, you know, fr from that point, end of December, early January, to when it really started to take off in, in Europe, like three weeks ago or so, the WHO kept telling other nations, look, this is serious, you need to prepare. And yet they didn't. It's like everyone so why, why now blame China? You know, it, it's a, it, they can't have the cake and eat it. When it first erupted in China, Western government said, oh, China are lying, it's a lot worse than, than they're telling us. And then when it, after, after that, they didn't tell us. They, they didn't tell us. It was so was. Bad. But if you presumed it was so much worse, then surely you should have been preparing <laughs> better. So, you know, they can't have the cake and eat it, which is, appears to what they want to do yeah. you know i want to put it back to the masks in because i've got a story to tell from from yesterday that happened so sometimes you go out of your house or you go out of your apartment and you forget to put a mask on because you just go out naturally without thinking about it and, and you might realize 20 steps away oh yeah of course i forgot my mask yesterday was the first time i actually totally forgot i got on my bike and i went towards looking coffee and then once I was going past the metro station, the, the, there was about, it could have been 50 to 100 police officers were all lined up next to the metro station, exactly where I was riding past. And it was only at that point I thought, oh my God, I'm not wearing a mask. And this thing with the, you know, the, the xenophobia and the discrimination, yeah. being a foreign, I literally, I was, I, I put my, um, t-shirt over my yeah. mouth like that and i went past and i was just like i was so scared because at the yeah. end you're very tense at this point but that, that's an absolute good example where if that clip had been taken by somebody on video that could have easily gone on to social media in china they go oh look look it's foreigner not wearing a mask not wearing a mask oh definitely but because you explain the context that it was a genuine mistake and you forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then that puts it into a, a whole different picture. Yeah, 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 that's true. Whereas, you know, if that had been a clip on social media, it could have been, look, this photo goes everywhere, it doesn't yeah, bother it doesn't wearing work. a mask. Definitely. And this is the danger with this social media. People must, must look at these clips and think about the wider context of the situation, which they generally don't, you know. Report of five million trouble. Thank you very much, Alex. Great chat, guys. Happy Easter from Wi Fi. Happy yeah. Easter to Happy you. Easter I didn't even you, I completely forgot it is Easter, isn't it? Yeah. Easter uh, shout out to Alex. Alex has a great channel here. He's just done a load of stuff on Chongqing, and I believe he's going to be uh, back there to do some more. So appreciate that, Alex. Um, yeah, like you said about, about the mask. I mean, 
I've, I've, I had a point then and I've lost my train of thought. What was it? What, what were you saying earlier about the um, the double standards thing? Oh, right? yeah. That Actually, Hayley Rue has just mentioned this, the, the double standards. So let me give you an example here. Um, and this is probably the, the, the most one that was talked about in, in the uh, media in the West when, when the, the doctor here put something on his uh, social media about a, a new virus at that point, didn't know what it was. And he got reprimanded. A lot of people think he got arrested and charged. He didn't. He just got a kind of slap on the wrist and told not to do it. He had to uh, sign something. Yeah, to he say signed that he something. Will go through the yeah. procedures. Now that was simply because he didn't follow the correct procedure. Now I see. I, I read a, an article in the Guardian, which is a British newspaper, that a number of healthcare workers, nurses, especially in the UK, are. Uh, believe they're having their social media monitored they've had emails and they've been threatened with disciplinary action for talking about um, their their work within the, the COVID-19 sphere uh, you know oh you mustn't have any interviews the media you mustn't put anything on your social media that we've got short now. so again th this is another kind of double standards in the media other things I'll cite is recently the US dismissed the captain of, of, of one of their aircraft carriers because he raised the alarm about an outbreak of, of coronavirus on, on that ship mm. and they dismissed him from his post oh why did they dismiss him oh because he didn't go through the proper channels so this is exactly the same you know um uh, so he's been he's been dismissed and their first amendment is freedom of speech yeah so this is the thing that people are Clocking, <laughs> yeah, it's, like it's freedom of speech on paper until it until a the situation arrives and it doesn't yeah. suit the government. Like, you know, uh, everyone said, Oh, yeah, the UK has freedom of speech. Well, but, but these healthcare workers can't speak freely because they're being threatened with being um, fired. Yeah, they're, they're getting threatening emails saying, Don't speak to the media, don't put stuff on social media. Yeah, and we yeah. don't have freedom of speech on, on YouTube because. Yeah, most of our videos get demonetized. It's been the policy has been changed. The policy has now. changed now, yeah. um, but you know a lot of videos get demonetized when you know. But actually, nobody on YouTube has freedom of speech because you can't decide to, to put something. There's somebody who decides whether that is okay or not. Well, the, the, the difference is it's going to stay on the platform. However, they can. Well, sometimes it doesn't. Mm. But then that extreme, that's like terrorism and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So, I think we can all agree. <laughs> yeah, even if something's against the political party, it can stay on the platform. However, <clears throat> they might demonetize it, um, which is down to a human reviewer. If it doesn't um, coincide with what the what's best for YouTube, they can demonetize your videos. So it's going to manipulate you into, you know, if, especially if you're doing it for income. Mm -hmm. Um, it's going to manipulate you into not talking about those specific things because they don't only demonetize the video. They also, we personally think, and a lot of other YouTube does think, that if your video is demonetized, it doesn't get the um, exposure that it would if well, it was monetized. It doesn't definitely because doesn't. It's, if it's not got adverts on it, it's not earning you money, it's not earning YouTube money. So why would they waste time? You know showing people that video that's not going to earn them money right it's, they're a business at the end of the day um so it they can they have massive um control over what sort of narrative they push in in youtube and they can show people videos that align with their political bias. Yeah, unfortunately, um, in, in the West, there's, there's not really a lot of competition to YouTube. You know, in, in, in China, you've got you've got Weibo, you've got Tiao Tiao, you've got Billy Billy. There's so many So there's more platforms. competition, whereas was in, in, in the West, there's not really. It's, it's YouTube. It's dominated by YouTube. Yeah, you can't say, oh, look, we're going to go off YouTube because we disagree with what you do and, and still get the same exposure on it on a platform like Vimeo because it's just not got the user base. If you want to reach people, YouTube is your only option. Yeah. So just, just another thing about double standards, if you even just look at the language that Western press use. So, okay, when they locked down Wuhan, all the Western media said, oh, you know, you're abusing the human rights of Chinese people, locking them in their apartments, blah, blah, blah. Then when Italy do it, oh, it's for the uh, the safety of the people. It's to, it's to prevent 
that you know there's this there's this very very different narrative and and i noticed this it, it, and you look at the fundamental thing when the west want to say something it's news when china want to say something it's <coughs> propaganda if they want to say something. yeah you know it, it doesn't matter what it is our oh, propaganda yeah. now we get accused all the time in our things our oh, ccp shield yeah. I, I recently did a, a video in a wet market now that's my local wet market I go there probably two or three times a week to buy meat, vegetables, whatever I, I need, great place. But I made a video because in Western people's minds, all these wet markets are full of wild animals, endangered species. And I just wanted to show that actually our local wet market is. Now, I'm not saying all markets around China like that. I'm very aware that there are people in markets who do illegally sell wild animals. I'm not, I'm not trying to pretend for one minute it's not happening here. And I, I have a video I want to make about that in the future. However, in Western people's minds, these wet markets, which are pretty much no different to sort of markets in other parts of the world, they've got in their mind that they're these bad places where they're full of viruses. And I wanted to show that wasn't the case. However, in the comments, I still got a number of kind of small minded people going, Oh, you must have had CCP minders when, when you went following to the area, you. <laughs> following you around, not letting you go to the area of the market where, where the wild animals are. <laughs> I just think it's so ridiculous that you just can't have an open mind. <laughs> you know, it's like I could go around the streets of, of you know San Francisco and film some homeless people and go, Oh, this is what the whole of America's like. Yeah. Of course it's not. But I just find it amazing that these people just can't open their minds a little bit and accept that something they hear in the media is not sort of everywhere, you know. Um, of course the media want, want to sell news and make money. So they, they, they pick small, small examples and try to make believe that this is what it's like everywhere we're in reality that's just not the case at i've all. got a, a point to add to that just before i do thank you zihao uh, zihao and dean gal for your donations there hello from shanghai hello to you too we've just come yeah. back from there great great place. city missing so <laughs> much um so my point to that i actually mentioned it in a video that's going to be releasing soon i talked about it a lot more in depth behind the keyboard everyone's got a brave face it doesn't matter who it is everyone you know, a message on the computer, you don't think about the face behind it. So whether it's coming from someone who has lived in their mum's basement their whole life, they've never left the country, they are, you know, so nationalistic that they don't care about any other point of view and it's it's their way or you're wrong, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of these people and they're putting comments from anonymous accounts um, saying these things and it's like, if you actually spoke to this person face to face, there's two things. One, they probably wouldn't say it because they don't have the bravery to say it to your face. Yeah, yeah. And two, you would literally just, you wouldn't even engage in conversation with these people because you just, you just would think, why, why am I gonna, why am I gonna take your opinion? Yeah. Uh, I think it's very, like, very difficult to, to, to ever change some people's minds. They get something in their head and even when you show them the reality of the situation is different, they still can't accept it. Like that wet market, there's people who I'm actually walking around filming, yeah, showing people exactly what it's like. Yet still, some people can't accept that's the reality because <laughs> in their head, wet markets are full of wild oh, animals and endangered species, you know. And I, I really don't know how you, you you deal with those people. Thank you, Eric. That's very much appreciated. Thank you very much. Just to let you know, me and Oliver here, we're pretty much full-time content creators. We, we don't yeah. have another job. So we, we, we do rely on our income from YouTube and any donations. And, you know, it, it does take a long time to put some content together. You know, we both work pretty much full-time on content creators. So... You know, when you support us, it really does mean a lot to us. So yes, thank you very sure. much for your donations and your support. Um, it has been tough for the last couple of months because literally probably 80% of the videos we've put out got demonetized um, simply because they, they were referring to COVID-19 or coronavirus. And sometimes later they, they, they get reviewed. But by that time, it's too late because all your views are in the, the first couple of days and sometimes it takes them time to, to review them. So we lose out massively there. So it, 
yeah, we really appreciate the support that that you all give us. Yeah, really thank do. you very much. Um, I, I just want to say about that that what we we're just talking about again. It's like I just wish, right? My my fix to to this anonymous account thing is. I would love it if it was the way that China is, where you have to upload an ID card to an account, and it has to be ref uh, the name. It can't be anonymous. I, would, I hate yeah. this anonymous account. Yeah, I agree. Because too many people make anonymous accounts, and you go onto their Twitter feed or their their whatever, and it's just all of their feed is just going onto people's profiles and bashing them because they're obviously got a lot of hatred for the world, yeah. and all they want it, it might give them. Uh, half an hour of satisfaction just by saying this is what I think of you you know yeah. just I, I think people. as well I, you know I have no problem with criticism um, and, and you know I, I sometimes have some, there's, there's some good you know critical comments in our comments on our videos and that's fine and, and I'll like to answer those but when people just literally abuse you I, I just I think he's mindless, and, and, and many of these people you try to question and they never respond because mm. they don't have any critical thinking or intelligent thinking. It's just like, oh, you're in China, you've said something good about China, you must be bad. Yeah. You know, and I just find it absolutely mindless, really. Yeah, so if, if you were to um, just, just to go in there, thank happy you shopper. So much, thank happy you. shopper. Thanks for the, um, the super Raven sticker. Chan, thank you very much. Uh, Division Italy, but GTA. Oh, just just something um, I want to bring up, Oliver, which is really important, um, and this could be quite controversial. So there was some um, investigation, so some research released yesterday, right? Mm. And it was joint research by scientists in England and scientists in Germany. And they've done some research on the mutations of the early virus, and they found mainly three strains, okay? Now, this is going to be pretty controversial. I'm sure the debates will go on. But this is research into trying to find the, the source. But basically, they found three main strains. Now, there was a strain A, a strain B, and a strain C. So strain B was the majority of the strain that was found in Wuhan. Strain C is the majority of the strain that was found in Europe. Strain A was the strain that was found in a lot of Americans. Yet in Wuhan, they found strain A in American people that were living in Wuhan. Whereas most of the Chinese people living in Wuhan had a, the strain B. So I think this is very interesting. Um, and what, what this research was saying is that the, the kind of original disease is strain A. Right. Yeah, a lot of the people in Wuhan had this strain B. There's nothing conclusive. They're not saying that, oh, this meant it come from here or here right, or right, here. Right. But it means, I think, they're getting closer to finding the source. Obviously, more research. This was, this was conducted on a couple of hundred of the earliest patients they're aware of in, in different countries. Uh, so there are can, sort of three main strains. Uh, can you imagine if it was proved beyond um, all reasonable, reasonable doubt that it came from another country? Uh, it would like, I don't even know what yeah, would happen. Yeah, would yeah, I mean, and this is the danger where, you know, a virus can originate anywhere, yeah? You know, it, it it's not, oh, because this, because it's this, not, because yeah, this. Yeah. And, and I think this is the ridiculous thing when people are finger pointing. You know, you, you, you've got people in some countries that say, "Oh, we need to sue America for all the money." Sorry, sue um, China for all the money the economy is lost. Yeah, okay. The, the the spread started in Wuhan, but that's not necessarily where the virus started. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and there seems to be more evidence coming to light now that maybe it didn't actually start in Wuhan. Well, if the incubation can be up to 24 days, then that, that, that could be an array of possibilities, really, couldn't it? Absolutely. I mean, I think it's very dangerous to, to listen to conspiracy theories, but this is not a conspiracy. This is, this is actually, you know, research that's been done by British and German scientists. And I think that there's obviously a lot of scientists all around the world working on this because if they can find the original source, it helps prevent 
further pandemics and viruses in yeah, the yeah, yeah. so there will be a lot of research into this and, and, and that's a good thing right i just want to say uh and a question's coming from jj Wang. just before i say that uh, we are going to be probably finishing this stream up in about 15 minutes so if you have got any questions that you definitely want to hear our answer and you know us discuss about it then uh, get them in as soon as you can so can a healthy chinese get a covid 19 test that you have to pay for it not in the us so um, i don't know about that i know personally for myself if i think i'm healthy and go in for one i do have to pay for it because i had a friend oh, okay. that went in and it's i looked it up and it's about it said on the inter, on the website that i saw it, it's 419 which is yeah. About seventy US dollars, yeah, so it's very it's affordable. Massively different to to the thousands of dollars that it seems to be in. in so in, I'm uh, not sure about Chinese citizens. I would imagine they probably have to pay for it unless they go in and say, "Look, I think I have COVID." Then they probably will get it for free. But then they will probably have to stay there, maybe you know, against their know, will or something, yeah, because maybe, they yeah. they might not be allowed out if if they say they think they've got it. Yeah. Whereas when I got my test um, a few weeks ago, um, they did, because I didn't have symptoms, they just, my, my temperature was just like 0.2 over what it should be. Um, they they tried to say that I should have a, um, CT. a CT scan and, and blood tests and I had to stay there. But then because it was literally 0.1 and 0.2 over, I had no symptoms, they said, look, um, come back in the morning because the, the COVID department is shut right now and um, we will test you in the morning and you don't have to have the CT scan. So they allowed me to go home. And you didn't enough. have to pay for that. Oh, sorry, yeah, and yeah. I didn't have to pay for that, even though I'm a, I'm a foreigner here. Okay, David Wong, I usually read <coughs> US news and write my comments and people would say CPP me to do it. Yeah, David, we get this all the time, you know, and, and and I just think it's ridiculous. And, and we go, oh, you know, people go, oh, you can't say anything that the CCP don't like. Look, I say what I see, whether that's positive about China. And you will find on this channel, you won't always find positive stuff. You know, earlier we were discussing about the discrimination of um, foreign people in China. That's not positive for China. But I have no problem talking about that. And there will be things in the future that may be not positive about China, but it's about talking about what we see and what happens to us, not what we think, you know, uh, that the CCP will like. That's just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I think, think um, nice. when you provide something from the other side, it, it, it brings a lot more authenticity to your channel as well, because a lot of people, even Chinese people, when we criticise that, that something in their society, they are very... They're like, thank you for being balanced. You know, we're, we're very aware that not everything's perfect in our country. Um, and it's it's nice to see some people bring in a balanced argument. So, yeah, we, we, that's what we'll continue to do. Peter Song, thank you very much thank for you, being a super sticker there. Um, so we will be finishing this up, as I said, in about 10 minutes. We just want to shout a few people out because we are... Uh, we're, we're going to 350 people now. Thank you all so much for staying tuned in. So we've got Scott... Sharwood, uh, we've got 40 going west, modern Picasso, some of the names are very interesting. Thank you for staying with us, Samantha. Andrew Chang, Paradigm, uh, Wixie, oh, Wixie, that's that's one of my friends, hey, hey man, good to see you in here. Hong Se Kong is still in here, Chun Wu, Dr. Yu, thank you guys for all staying in. So, have we, is, there, is there anything else on your no one notes you wanted to discuss? Let me have a quick look. Uh, I don't think there is, but I'll just have a quick look, so we don't know. Oh yeah, I just wanted to just mention something about, about fake news. And this goes back to a little bit with things out of context. What I find amazing is that sort of good factual things just don't get spread on social media. Now, we're always in a very different era of news than we were 20 years ago, because 20 years ago, pretty much people relied on a daily newspaper. Yeah. And you may have discussed a story with a few friends in the pub that evening, but it wouldn't spread much further than your circle of friends. You would only speak to people you knew or your family about, about, about those news articles. So things didn't spread. But now, because you have like umpteen social media platforms, things get spread between thousands and millions of people within a few hours. And what I find amazing is a lot of people, they will pick these fake news headlines up 
and they will spread them without even fact checking them. They don't even think critically about what they're seeing or reading. It's just like, oh my God, I, I give you a perfect example of this. It's the, the, the bat thing when, when this first oh, broke in China. So there was a, a Chinese girl, in, and I can't remember what country it was. It wasn't it China, wasn't in China was it? but it was almost like done as a meme, really. Yeah. Uh, a, a, a little sort of attention grab. When, when the, the when the um the virus first came out, there was suspicion that it may have come from bats. bats. Yeah, yeah. So this... bat, bats are a big harbour of, of coronavirus kind of viruses. And so this, this clip of this um, bowl of soup with a bat in it, you know, actually it was just a bit ridiculous if if you just thought about it. But people saw it. It got spread. You know, hundreds of millions of times around. Oh, look at the Chinese, they all eat bats. So now, ingrained in a lot of Westerners' heads, a is lot that, of people is that, think oh, that. yeah, uh, the virus came from China because they all eat bats. You know, and, and I've been coming here for more than 10 years. I have never seen a bat in a market, in a restaurant. And I can bet you, I, well, I don't know, but I can bet you. Everybody I've ever spoke to me has never had a bat, yeah. you know. And I think this is just ridiculous so that people just don't critically analyse the thing that they're spreading around. Yeah. It's just mad. I've seen friends from, you know, I used to have in high school, I've seen several of them. What just so, just such selfish comments on social media. Some people put like, oh, uh, one person particularly put, Oh, I had a car show soon, and thanks to China all eating bats, I'm not able to do that anymore. It's like in his head, that has happened because someone ate a bat, and there's, there's no change in that. That's it. Yeah. That, that one clip spread and said, look, someone ate a bat, and this is why the world has got a pandemic. So in their head, that's it. Like it's not someone ate a bat, it's someone in China ate yeah, a bat. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, and then there was another clip of a of a, a market where there was a lot of wild animals being sold. It's, oh, look, this watch. And if you actually looked at the clip, you could see that in that clip. They weren't even Chinese people at all, you know, in the market. And it turns out it was a clip from an Indonesian market. You yeah, know, this uh, is the thing as well. People tend not to think, oh, this happens in a lot of Asia. It's just China that's focused yeah. on yeah it's strange it's, it's really sad really that that as soon as people see something negative straight away oh it must be china because they're all eat bats in it china. must be really strange for you know I've, heard, I've spoke to students that have come back from abroad here and they said one of the things they really had to put up with it was a kind of form of bullying it's like people are constantly going oh you you eat all that weird stuff don't you you eat all those cats and dogs and, and bats and stuff don't you and look they there's a lot of Chinese people who eat stuff that we're not used to in the yeah. West, but there's also yeah, people in Australia eat kangaroo, yeah. people in France eat frogs Snails, and snails yes. and horse, yeah. and, and you know it's just. Well, we don't eat horse in the UK. There used to be a lot of rabbit eaten in the snails, UK. But, uh, but just different different cultures have different things to eat. Now, I, I, I don't know if if countries do eat bats. But I just think it's ridiculous because of one little video or two little videos that go viral on social media. It gets into like all Westerners says that oh, all Chinese eat bats. Yeah. It's just you know you, you've got to have a bit of critical thinking when you see this kind of, of you know videos and that. And I think the, people just don't. I think look, I can understand it as well because even. Before I came here a year ago, I would probably be just exactly the same as all these people because it just comes down again to ignorance. It's like I've now seen that by coming here, a lot of Western media is completely fake news. But before I came here, you didn't know. That I didn't know that. Yet. So it's a lot of people that literally have never. They've only gone on holidays, that, you know, around their neighbouring countries, and they just live in this bubble. Where that's the way the world works, and they're just ignorant to, to the outside. Yeah, world. I find it mad. I've spent it, you know, more than ten years here or half. I find it mad when I go back home, and I talk to people who've never even been to China, right? Never stepped foot on, on the ground here. Yet they think that they're right and I'm wrong about you know yeah. about about many things. Yeah. Oh yeah, but China this, but China that. 
yeah, but that's what you've read in, in the press and it's, it's not right. I can tell you I've been there and I've seen it and that's not how it is. I literally, you know, I, I, and you, you kind of feel sometimes you're banging your head against a brick wall because they just don't listen, you know, they, they don't accept that what you're telling them is right and what they're reading in the sensationalist media is wrong. That's it, that's, that's, again, that's the world we've created now. Like, whatever gets advertising revenue is what's going to be done. So yeah. It's like, people are more like, it's statistically proven, people are more likely to click something if it provokes a negative response. Yeah. So if they think, oh, no, God, if, if it's a happy thing, they're way less likely to click it than if they look at it and go, oh, that's so annoying, and then they click on it and the advertisers get their money. That's how it all... Yeah, I, 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 gets I often worse. wonder whether a lot of these people who, who put so much negative comments in our, in our sort of chats, if you could get the chance to bring them to China and take them around, whether that would actually change their thinking. Maybe, maybe a lot of you people, know. but maybe also not a lot of people just because yeah. they have this fixed view. It's also, look, I just want to mention we are we do love the fact that so, so it's it's way more supportive in the comments than negative and look even we've just we've just uh, proved what i just said we're more likely i don't know what it is it's just in the human brain you're more likely to to look at the negatives and to highlight those things yes yeah, and whatever it is but the the comment section are overwhelmingly positive in the va in pretty much all of our videos. Yeah. I so, love reading through the comments. Yeah, actually, we, really we do cool. appreciate every comment. And some videos, there are a lot of comments now, but you can, um, you know, absolutely be certain that we, well, either one of us is going to yeah, read that comment. I, in the early days, we, I, I was replying to a lot more comments. Um, I just want to sort of tell you why I'm not replying to so many anymore, simply because there's just so many coming in. Uh, so I many. do try to, uh, I certainly read them all, I'll sit for kind of a long, long time, hours and hours reading through them all because I find it fascinating, but I just sometimes don't get the time just to, to, to respond to oh, everyone. Yeah, it's impossible really, okay. but yeah, I, I'm absolutely desperate for the news, so we're going to have to finish this up in five minutes. If yeah. you have got any questions you want to get in, get them in now, um, because... Yeah, we're going to be well, finishing Once again, thank minutes. you very much for everybody that supports us. Just want to say really as well, we want to know what the, uh, you know, the, the, the hunger is for a second live stream per week because we're thinking of doing a bi-weekly stream maybe with a guest. Um, you know, we'll get a guest in either in person or online and we'll sort of just have a three or a four-way conversation and try and get some people on with different perspectives um, and things like that, and then sort of bring other things to light that yeah. we may not have thought of. So let us know in the, it would be better if you could say in the comment section of the video rather than the live stream comments, because they don't um, sort of get stapled onto the video. So let us know if you'd like to see a bi-weekly live stream on top of this one, because we're going to be doing this one every week. Yeah, we'll, we'll be here on uh, better video quality next time. Important. We're going to have to really look into this because yeah. we're having a big problem with the quality of these streams. We're using a third-party soft uh, piece of software to stream it, but it seems it might not be working out very well. Um, it looks okay on our screen here, but it seems maybe to you it's it's uh, different. Yeah, I really don't know what's going on. So yeah, we've just as well just we, literally this morning I refreshed my phone and it was. 70,000 on the dot subscribers. So, you know, unbelievable growth recently. Uh, and just a massive thank you to thank you all. We're just going to keep yeah. um, sort that. of pumping up the content. Hopefully, you enjoy it all. And uh, yeah, let us know where we go next in China. We'll make a bunch of videos there as well. Whilst I'm here, I literally want to visit. Right now, I've only been to sort of first tier cities and very well known places, yeah. but I really like to go into the places that are off the beaten path a little bit. Yeah, we are, we are going to plan some, some more adventures. I think that next one will be again to a um, bigger city, but I think after that we, we'd like to try and get out to some uh, more uh, rural places and bring you stuff from there. Anyway, yeah, thank you all for tuning in. Um, we will be signing out now. Any last words? 
just a big thank you to everybody for supporting us and for growing our subscriber base. The more subscribers you go, the more thumbs up you give our videos, the more people that subscribe, the more we can get the message out there to, to uh, people. All right, thank you very much. Take care, everybody. Take See you care. next time.